it's Tiffany from Rattle the Stars Studio, and today I'm going to talk you through how I made my Aziraphale from Good Omens Edwardian Edition. So let's get started. First things up are all of the undergarments. Okay, so the first thing about Aziraphale is that it starts with the undergarments. So I have a chemise and a set of split drawers that I wear under my corset, under everything. These ones that I have are made from the Truly Victorian TV 102, uh, the drawers and the chemise. I did shorten the chemise a lot just for my own preference, and I removed the buttons and buttonholes up at the top, but otherwise, They're exactly like what the pattern says. I have some lace at the uh, knee ankle. I had to shorten mine because I'm very short. And I have some uh, lace at the top of the chemise and at the hem. Uh, I don't have it on the arm holes because they're very tight and close to my arms and the lace uh, that was there was very annoying. So I took it off. Um, so next we will look at the corset. Okay, so my corset is a Victorian corset, technically. It's made with Truly Victorian's TV 110. It's the 1880s late Victorian corset. So while this costume is basically a 1900s outfit, it's Edwardian, I don't have the proper Edwardian s -Pend corset that you would really want to get that true pigeony Edwardian shape. Part of that is I already had this pattern in my stash and so I didn't really want to buy a new pattern, but also because of Aziraphale's costume and the fact that I was going to have the waistcoat and a jacket and everything on top of it, and I was kind of mimicking his like 1940s silhouette, I wasn't terribly worried about getting that pigeon front uh, look because you wouldn't really see it with everything else that I was going to be wearing as well. And I did kind of want to stay close to his silhouette from the show, even though I was changing time periods. Uh, so I decided to go with this 1880s corset. It gives me enough structure and shape for the silhouette I want uh, without any issues. Um, I would say I would recommend, especially if you're like me and I have a very short waist area, um, one of the things I did not do was add any kind of internal padding along the hip, especially at the back near the lacing, and I would recommend doing that for comfort. Uh, and I think the next corset that I make will have that, just because I find after a few hours, it puts a lot of pressure on the top of my hips and it gets very uncomfortable. Uh, so this corset is three layers. It's a uh, polyester shantung on the outside, it's a denim on the inside for the interlining, and then it's cotton for the lining. Um, so it is three layers, but it's not actually that thick, uh, just because each of the layers themselves are fairly thin. Uh, then I do have some lovely ribbon at the top, and then just a typical busk uh, in white. Uh, this was a stash project for the most part, so I used things that I already had. Uh, but it was a really easy and simple corset to make. I highly recommend it, especially if it's your first one. This is my very first corset, and I found it very easy to figure out and put together. Uh, so next, we will go on to the outer layers of everything. Okay, so for Aziraphale's shirtwaist, I actually just altered a pre-existing button down. It, I found one that was a lovely blue to match what I believe his actual shirt color is. So I took a button down, I changed where the buttons of the sleeves were located to help give it kind of more of a poofy look, and then I just shortened it because I didn't need it to be full length, just long enough to stay tucked under the skirt. And then I made his little bow tie out of another shirt that I repurposed because I found the perfect little plaid for it. Uh, and this 
just uh, hooks in the back. So I don't have to worry about tying a bow every time, even though it would be a good skill to have. Um, as you can tell, I'm not wearing a corset cover. Uh, I intend to add one eventually, but because of the vest and the coat, it actually isn't that big a deal. You won't really see uh, the line of the corset under those additional layers, but it would be nice just for accuracy's sake. So I recommend a corset cover. All right, so that's it. Now, next we'll talk about the fan skirt. So the fan skirt. I chose to use the uh, Black Snails pattern uh, 1891 fan skirt. It's a print at home pattern. It was so lovely to use. It has great instructions. It's very simple. It turned out absolutely beautifully. The only thing I will say is make sure that you use your regular waist measurement, not your corseted waist measurement, when you are picking your waist size in the pattern. I misdid this. I'm pretty sure I misread. And I picked my corseted waist measurement, which in turn ended up meaning that my waistband and, every, and my placket and everything didn't close fully. So I had to insert like an inch worth of fabric up at the waistband to make it close and my pleats don't come truly all the way to the back like they're supposed to because I did the wrong size. But even with that, it's a beautiful skirt. It moves so lovely. It's so fun to walk in. It has pockets already in the pattern, which I always forget to add pockets to all my stuff. And so it makes it so nice when it's already there for you. So I highly recommend this skirt I made out of a brown tannish suiting and then I found a like cottony canvas lining fabric to use both for lining but also to add weight and body so I didn't have to interline as well just because I didn't want to add even more fabric especially because this skirt takes so much fabric to start with so it was just a budget move and Picking that heavier lining has helped so much. It adds so much body to the skirt without adding even more layers. So I highly recommend that. And just a little nerdy moment, I picked for my lining this brown pomegranate fabric um, because I'm definitely part of the Ineffable Husbands Club. And I like that kind of... Persephone Hades vibe that you get with the will they won't they angel demon thing. So all my pockets are lined in pomegranates and it makes me giggle a lot and that's just there for me uh, to enjoy. But yeah, so here's the skirt. It just moves and hangs so beautifully and I love it so very much. Um, for mine, I did a um, pretty wide hem. So, you know, there it is. So next up, the vest or waistcoat. So the waistcoat. This is another Black Snails pattern. I used the 1830s vest uh, when I went to make a zero fail and I was looking for vest patterns that would fit both what his screen costume was and what I wanted it to look like for my interpretation. The only vest pattern I found that really worked was a men's vest pattern, which ended up not being a big deal. I still use my measurements and then you just alter it, just altered it to fit and take it in. I actually need to adjust this a little bit more it came in a little too much on my hip um, but that's an easy fix so one of the things with this costume I really wanted to work on and make sure I had was an interesting array of textures Aziraphale's costume is very beige and brown and tan and within the same color family and that works but I wanted to make sure that it was still visually interesting so I made sure to have a lot of different 
texture going on. So the suiting of the skirt is a much smoother texture. And then this is actually a suede fabric. So it gives it kind of a soft, fuzzy texture with beautiful welt pockets, again, lined in pomegranates. Uh, and then the inside I have lined with a brown cotton that I repurposed from a bed sheet. Uh, so it was a nice sort of economical move. And then little metal buttons down the front. So we have only one more piece to talk about, and that is the full coat. All right, so this is the final piece for Xerophil, and it is his outer coat. This is an Edwardian coat pattern from Black Snail's pattern. Again, I used a lot of their patterns for this because they were just perfect, and I highly recommend them. For this coat, there are beautiful welt pockets. I again lined it in pomegranates. I chose not to do buttonholes and just to have the buttons be decorative because for this costume I was never planning to button the coat. It's always meant to be open so that you see the waistcoat and everything else. This fabric, it's really hard to kind of see here, but it's this beautiful like tweed woven fabric. It is an upholstery fabric that I found and it has these different specks of color throughout it. It's so gorgeous in person and I think it adds a beautiful additional texture to the entire outfit to keep it really interesting. Like I said, the biggest challenge for Xerophil is that he has a very beige and brown and tan outfit and I wanted to do everything I can to keep it looking, excuse me, looking interesting and give it that depth and that texture. It is lined in the same brown that I lined my vest in, except for the sleeves. Um, I might go back and add it, but honestly, most of the things that I will be wearing, most of the events or costume things, uh, conventions that I will be wearing them take place in more summer months. And I'm really reluctant to add another layer to the outfit for wearing it. Just, I don't want to overheat. And it's already a lot of layers. Uh, I'm sweating just filming this. So I don't know if I'm gonna line the sleeves. The buttons are beautiful wood buttons. Again, just to add a little bit more interest and texture to the outfit. So here she is in her full glory. This is my female Edwardian Aziraphale from Good Omens. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it interesting. If you are a Good Omens fan, please let me know. If you've cosplayed Good Omens, let me know. I would love to see photos of your costume and all of that. Everyone I've met has been absolutely amazing. Both fabulous outfits, just lovely people. Uh, the Good Omens fandom is so sweet and so supportive and I love everyone's creativity. If you've done any Edwardian things, let me know because this has been a really fun era to play in and I look forward to playing in it more, especially in more of like a frilly realm of things. So like I said, this is my costume. This is how I've made it. Uh, it wasn't terribly hard. It's just a lot of pieces and taking your time with it. So if you have any questions, any comments, tell me your favorite Good Omens character in the comments below and I will catch you all next time.